What's up guys, Questler here, and today we're back for another video. In this video, we're gonna be discussing software that you need to make your games in 2025. There are a variety of software that is useful for making video games um, from 3D modeling, photo editing, video editing, sound design, productivity software for keeping track of where you're at and stuff like that. There's all sorts of different software that is useful in, in the game development space and I'm gonna cover a lot of those software in this video. Uh, another thing I want to kind of cover is also price. I know for a lot of indie game developers, price is very important and determining whether or not you're going to use the software is typically up to the price because as we all know, as indie game developers, we are on a very tight budget and having to pay $500 a year for an Adobe subscription is not really what we can afford all the time, right? So more often than not we have to find alternatives that are either one-time payments or not as expensive of subscriptions right or just free outright so we're going to be discussing that as well um as we go through each of our software so yeah with all that being said let's get right into this all right so the first piece of software we're going to talk about is game engines this is the most important piece of software when developing your games uh each more often than not, you're going to be using a game engine to develop your game. Unless you're going to be programming your engine from scratch, you're going to be making your game from scratch in code. Um, mad respect if you're doing that. Um, then I guess you could just sort of kind of skip this part of the video. But for the rest of us, we're probably using game engines, right? We're going to be using Unreal Engine, Unreal Engine Unity, Game Maker Studio, Godot. There's probably lots of other engines out there that you may be using to uh, to make your games. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to cover the, the four bigger indie engines that are more popularly used, um, but there are other en engines out there that are available. Uh, the first one is Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine has a huge set of features from animating, material uh, making, scripting with uh, visual scripting using blueprints. There's so many different features in Unreal Engine. It is a large engine. It is meant for making beautiful 3D games. You can also make 2D games in it as well, but it is really built for 3D, especially if you're really trying to make your game look really, really pretty with the graphics. Unreal Engine makes it stupid easy to have a very pretty looking game. Um, Unreal Engine is very, very popular uh, amongst indie game developers and AAA studios alike. Uh, it is a fully featured engine with lots of different features and tools to help you make your game. It is also worth mentioning that Unreal Engine does cost money, but not until you make over a million dollars in revenue. Once you make a million dollars in revenue, uh, they will want 5% after that point. Once you make a million dollars, you'll have to pay them a little bit. It probably is going to take a while to make a million dollars off of your games, so you may never ever have to pay that. So Unreal Engine is free for pretty much all intents and purposes. Um, and, until you make that million dollars. Unreal Engine also supports C++ as a scripting language as well. So that is also worth mentioning as well. If you don't want to touch visual scripting, it also has C++ or if you want to delve into C++ scripting, it is also available as well. The next engine I'm going to talk about is Unity. Unity is also extremely popular amongst indie games developers. Uh, it's been used for lots of mobile games, games on consoles and PC. It is used by, again, indie game developers and AAA studios alike. There's lots of games made by Unity. Here's a whole list of games on their page that's just full of games that have been made in this engine. Unity supports C-sharp scripting and it also has a visual scripting as well. It also has a lot of different features and stuff like that to help you make your game from material generation and all sorts of different tools in engine to help you uh, develop your game. It is a very powerful engine. Uh, it does 3D and 2D. Um, it kind of supports it supports both, and can you can make your scenes look just as pretty as an Unreal Engine in Unity. It is very powerful. It may take a little bit more work to get them to look that pretty, but you can still make your game look very pretty. The price for Unity is free until you make uh, two hundred thousand dollars in twelve in the last twelve months. So two hundred thousand dollars within a year, basically. Then you have to pay them a subscription. Eventually, like if you make two hundred thousand dollars, you'll have to uh, pay for it. The next engine I want to cover is Godot. Uh, Godot has a lot of tools as well for making games in the engine. Uh, it uses C Sharp, C++, or its own scripting language for um, scripting your your mechanics and stuff like that in the game to program your game. Uh, it has 2D and 3D support, and it is open source, which is unique amongst uh, the other game engines that I mentioned here, is that it's open source. So if you want to go contribute to the project and put your own coding into it, you can contribute uh, to Godot. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's an open source engine, so that's pretty neat, and it's free. So that's nice also. So you don't ever have to pay anything uh, for Godot. So no matter how much money you make, Godot is going to be free and it's open source, which is a benefit as well. So that is pretty cool. Uh, the next one I want to talk about is Game Maker Studio. Game Maker Studio has visual scripting. I believe it also has uh, another scripting language that you can use. I don't really know. I've never used it. 
Um, it does have a price of $99 for Game Maker Studio 2. It does have a lot of tools and stuff in it. It is a very popular engine. It isn't free like the other ones, unfortunately, but I'm sure it is a powerful engine. I've never used it. it it's a great option if you if you want to use that, um, if you like its tool set and stuff like that, and you uh, like its layout and its simplicity. Uh, game Maker Studio is a great option as well. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for the game engines that I have listed here. There are many other game engines out there that... Uh, that are out there that you can use uh just a little bit of research i'll have a link in the description to all the ones that i did mention to their website so you can either go purchase them or download them if you'd like to use any of them and uh yeah with that being said we're going to move on to the next piece of software all right so the next software we're going to be talking about is art and 3d modeling software so whether you're making a 3d game or a 2d game um you're going to need some kind of way to get your art made and put it into engine right so you're going to have to use a 3d modeling software or a, an image editing software like photoshop or something like that to to make your artwork if you're making a 3d game it's likely you're going to have a 2d uh like a photo editing software anyway because you're going to need to make marketing material for your game if you plan on releasing it so it's very likely you're going to be using that anyhow but for 3d modeling software uh autodesk makes uh 3ds max and maya as uh, 3d modeling software uh they are paid subscriptions and they are very expensive it's very likely you're not going to be using those uh, but they are there if you want to go buy that subscription for those um, the other more popular one that more likely you are going to be using is Blender. Blender is free and it's free to use. There are lots of tutorials on it. It has 3D modeling, uh, material like texturing on the models, and it's animation in it. It is a fully fully built 3D modeling software that you can do pretty much anything you can do in 3ds Max or Maya in it. You can just do everything uh, in Blender and you can animate all your stuff your 3D models and add bones and stuff and add your cool models to do all the stuff that you got to animate in Blender. It's it's a very powerful software. It does have a pretty steep learning curve though, um, but it is, it is very useful. Uh, for 2D art, um, you're probably gonna, depending on the kind of art you're making, if you're doing like pixel art, you're probably gonna wanna go pick up a sprite. There's other also free options like online for like pixel art is such as Piscal or other online tools. There's also, you can also use Photoshop or, or uh, Affinity Photo to, to make pixel art as well. You just have to adjust a couple settings for that. But yeah, uh, for a sprite, I would strongly suggest if you're doing pixel art, I'd suggest picking that uh, photo, the, that software up. It's great. I use it, uh, it's, it's good. It's really powerful as well for making a pixel art. It has everything pretty much how you need it. Other photo editing software that you probably are gonna be using, Photoshop. Uh, it is a paid subscription, unfortunately, about $10 a month. Or you can buy the Creative Cloud whole suite of software, which might be a good idea if you're planning on using other Adobe software. If you're not planning on just using Photoshop, it might be worth picking up the whole Creative Cloud suite and just using all of that. Um, but that is about $52 a month or about $520 a year or something like that. It's, it's pretty expensive. Um, I, I don't know what to say. Adobe is so widely used and their prices are absurd. Um, but they're used by professionals. That, that's what everyone else uses it. So if, if you wanna cough up the money for Photoshop or the Creative Cloud suite of programs, you can pick that up. But uh, I would probably suggest if you're making a video game, you're probably better off getting away with the $10 subscription for Photoshop and just calling it a day. Uh, you can find a video editing software and animation software elsewhere. Affinity Photo is another option. Uh, it's similar to Photoshop, has many similar functionalities. It's a very similar look and feel to Photoshop as well. It is very, very good as well. Uh, it is paid, but it is a one-time payment of $69.99. So that is worth mentioning if you want to have a Photoshop alternative that is uh, just as powerful almost. And um, it is, you know, very similar look and feel if you're used to using Photoshop and you want to cancel that subscription and get out of that whole ecosystem. Affinity Photo is a great place to go. Uh, it is very similar. It has a very similar look and feel, and you could probably follow a lot of tutorials and stuff like that that are similar to Photoshop on Affinity Photo. You probably follow along pretty well. But yeah, Affinity Photo is a great option as well. Uh, Paint.net is another uh, photo editor. It's free. Uh, it can do a lot of basic stuff. It can do a lot of the similar stuff as uh, Photoshop and Affinity Photo, but it is free. Its tools are uh, a little lacking in terms of what you can do. Uh, can't do as much as the other two that I mentioned. I would probably suggest if you're an indie game developer to probably pick up Affinity Photo, but if you are absolutely on a budget and you can't afford anything, uh, Paint.net is an option as well for making your artwork and marketing images and stuff like that uh, if you really, really need a free option. That's pretty much it on photo editing software. There are probably other options out there that you can look into. Um, just a quick Google search will probably help you find those. But yeah, that's pretty much it for, for 3D modeling and photo editing. More often, you're probably gonna end up using Blender or Affinity Photo 
for all of your photo editing and 3D modeling needs or uh, Blender Photoshop for the, those options if you're making a 3D game. If you're making a 2D game, if you're doing pixel art, a sprite, you're probably gonna use that or one of the free options I mentioned online. Um, or you can use Photoshop or Affinity Photo to do pixel art as well. They're just as useful, you can use those as well. All right, so the next piece of software is audio editing and recording. Audio work and stuff like that is very important for game development, for developing your sounds and music for your games. This can really make your, the music and sounds can really make the tone and feel of your game really come to life and really help make your game have a certain feel to it. So having a DAW is probably really important if you're gonna be making sounds for your game. Uh, I know you could probably get away from without making sounds for your game, uh, or you could use assets and stuff like that, which is a great option as well, but if you need custom sounds, you're probably gonna wanna look into getting a DAW. FL Studio is a great option, it's paid, it is fairly expensive, a couple hundred bucks, depending on which tier you get. Uh, but it's a great option for sound design and music making. Uh, it can do all sorts of stuff and it has a lot of tools and stuff that you can build into it. Like that has like uh, different oscillators and stuff like that. You can play around with and make different sounds and stuff like that. Edit your sounds, it has all that capability. Um, so that's pretty useful. Adobe Audition, if you are in the Adobe suite um, and you're possibly gonna pay for that Creative Cloud, the whole thing for $52 a month or 500 something dollars a year, Adobe Audition is there as well for uh, making sounds and recording sounds and editing the sounds and stuff like that. That is a wonderful option. Reaper is another DAW, it's paid. Uh, they have a free trial for it though, if you wanna try it out. Uh, FL Studio also has a free trial as well. It's worth mentioning that, uh, but it's paid and it's from making music and editing sounds and doing all that stuff again. They all have very similar functionalities um, given that they're all meant for audio work. If you're looking for a free option, Audacity is a great choice. Um, it is very limited in what it can do, but you sure can record and uh, edit sounds with Audacity. It will basically do the bare minimum of what you need it to do. And that, that's a great choice as well. Uh, it doesn't have any of the other like extensive features as like the DAWs do with oscillators and stuff like that to make custom sounds. But if you need to record sounds and just simply have it basic editing with it, it'll do that. And that's a lot of times all you need. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is video editing software. I know this is probably like, wait, what? What do you mean video editing software? Well, more often than not, you're gonna have to make a trailer for your game. And that's why I'm including in this whole list here is because you might release your game and you might need to make a trailer for it to get your audience like to want to buy and play your game, right? So you're gonna need to have some way to take all the footage and recording and stuff like that that you may be taking out of Unreal Engine or Unity um, because those engines, or Unreal Engine at least, I know for sure has a way of recording an engine to take clips and stuff like that. It has a whole cinema machine thing to, to do all that. I've used it on the Amazing Ball. Uh, you might need to take all those clips and stitch them together and that's what a video editing software is useful for, uh, especially cutting up material and stuff like that. And so it's important to make that stuff for trailers and marketing material. Uh, the first one I'm gonna mention is DaVinci Resolve. Actually, DaVinci Resolve can probably cover quite a few of your needs all in one go from animation to um, not animating 3D models at least, but animating like 2D stuff, video stuff, animating visuals. It covers everything from recording to animation and video editing. So like using Fairlight, like you can use that to, you know, in, in DaVinci Resolve to record, you know, and animate and sound recording and editing and it as well. It can do just about everything from start to finish. Uh, it's a whole, it's really like almost like a whole suite of software in one software. It's awesome. I use it for editing my videos. I just switched to it after having to cancel my Adobe subscription, but it's great. It's free. Uh, they also have a paid version as well, but for probably most of us, it, it is free. So you won't really need to buy it, which is great. Uh, it'll do everything you need to do. Another option is uh, Adobe Premiere Pro, uh, subscription-based. Again, if you want to pay the $20 a month for Premiere Pro, or if you're gonna be using Photoshop and stuff like that, you'll be picking up the Adobe Creative Cloud subscription for $52 and 500 or something, or 500 something dollars a year. It's expensive, as I've meant, as I keep mentioning, Adobe is expensive. Uh, we all know this, right? Um, but uh, Premiere Pro is really powerful uh, for editing your video, and you can use After Effects for having to animate any kind of things into your trailers and stuff like that as well. Uh, Vegas Movie Studio and Vegas Pro are also good video edit editors to use. Uh, Movie Studio is cheaper. Vegas Pro is the more professional option. Um, Movie Studio Suite, I believe is like $80. Um, unless you get it like on a sale or something like that, it can be cheaper, but that is a great choice as well. Uh, there are other free options as well, but DaVinci Resolve though 
if you're gonna be if you need a video editor to make your trailers davinci resolve that's like the go-to that's what i would suggest going to it's it's really really powerful movie studios use davinci resolve it's a great option some other software outside of the ones that i mentioned uh for just productivity or keeping track of things uh, using Jira for keeping track of your tasks and stuff like that is really important to keeping progress on the development of your game. I would suggest using that. Uh, GitHub for source control and stuff like that. I would suggest using GitHub or GitLab or something along those lines. They have software for those. I know we're not really covering these extensively, but I think uh, they're important as well. And I think uh, there's just not as much to say about them because they're pretty self-explanatory in what they do. Uh, GitHub allows you to back up a project as well as use it as a source control so you can have many different branches of different versions of your project all at once and being able to have, you know, if you're working on like an active development branch, that stuff is like has a full test and you can have like a test branch for testing your stuff and then a main branch for releasing your stuff and that could all be merged together as I've mentioned in previous videos. Uh, I have a whole GitHub tutorial with Unreal Engine if you want to go check that out. I have a card in the top right corner of the screen. Go check it out. Uh, it's a good video if you want to learn how to use GitHub with uh, Unreal Engine. It's pretty beginner friendly. But yeah, uh, you also may want a word processor such as uh, Microsoft Word or Google Docs to keep track of ideas and stuff like that to concept things down before actually hopping into Engine and developing stuff. Those are great choices to have as well. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. These are all the software that I think are needed software for indie game developers in 2025. If you liked the video, leave a like, comment if you have any questions or anything like that, or any other software suggestions that I missed. Uh, there's lots and lots of software out there. And if I missed any that you think are great options for indie game developers, be sure to definitely comment it uh, and let people know about it. Uh, maybe leave a link or something like that in the comment to the websites and stuff like that, that they can go and get the software at. But uh, yeah for more videos like this one be sure to hit that bell icon as well and with all that being said i'll see you guys in the next video have a great day peace out